Hey guys, what's going on? Andrew Murray here and Jack Murray with From your, Jack Murray TV. With your Wanderers update. So it's been a few a few days, a few matches since our last update. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to preview the match today because this is match yeah. day and it's going to be Valor coming into the Wanderers grounds yeah. where the Wanderers have only lost, um, I, I think it's I think it's one time or two times at home um, so far. So it's now this is turning out to be a must win game Yeah. because because HFX has been on the road for like their last like three five to four, games. five games. So and they and they, I don't think they've won any one of them actually. So they're not good, the greatest um, away, but they're but they should win at home because they did knock out Valor from the Canadian Championships. So I really so they so they can like beat them and especially at home. Yeah, so right now in the standings, they're both sitting at the bottom of the table at four points in the spring season. Um, Valor at seventh, HFX at sixth. Valor actually has two games in hand, though, uh, which is significant because that gives them a huge advantage um, and opportunity to, to claw above, um, above Halifax. So this is actually a six-point game for, for Halifax. Um, it's, it's, it's a must-win and they've been in pretty bad form yeah. on the uh, on the road, relatively speaking. So let's go back yeah. and look at some of the games just really quickly before we get into this game. So on uh, the 13th, Cavalry won one nothing. Um, that game, the Wanderers they, really should have won. They could, and, they really could have won. Like Wanderers have just been having like a lot of bad luck with the games, but they do have the potential to really get into third or second place and at one time they were at third was that their highest score yeah i mean they won the first game of the spring season it was looking like they were yes be... you know now we got the the team in place we're going to make a run and since then it's... they've they haven't won um so after that yeah. there was forge two nothing over wanderers and yeah. that could have been significantly higher uh the score um mm -hmm. in, in, in that one um Pacific. Pacific beat them three to one, and Which is really weird because Pacific was doing like really bad. Yeah, so that was that was kind of a disappointing performance all around. Um, been a lot of travel at that point. Uh, then they tied two two to Ottawa, Ottawa Fury, Fury in the second leg. And arguably, they should have been up ahead going into the second leg because, because Bonus goal was was disallowed. Yeah. Actually, but, their Ottawa's third goal was wasn't a real goal. It looked offside. Yeah, and like they had called it back, and they had said that it wasn't a real goal. And HFX's last goal, they called it back, and they said that it actually was a goal. So really, that the the game before that with Ottawa and eight Wanders should have been three two for the Wanders' favor. Yeah. So and then in the last game, man, they went up two nothing. And then they let in two goals. Arguably, they were they one was like just in stoppage time, you know, from a free kick from a shove that was given that really didn't need to be uh, really didn't need to be given. It was a soft foul in the first place, but the yeah. shove should have never have, have happened, particularly that close to to going into the half, and that really changed the the momentum in the game. And arguably, I mean, both of those goals were savable. Um, so that was disappointing that they couldn't go on and face Toronto FC. But yeah. be that as it may, um, it's all part of this part of this long road trip. Yeah, because actually, I know this isn't really like meant. It's just a cool fact. Actually, Jacob Schaffenberg, who now plays for uh, Toronto FC, was originally from like Nova Scotia. So it would have been really cool for him. To come home and play like to come back team. and be the Wanderers. <laughs> Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Yeah, of course. Um, and then three days after that Ottawa Fury game, York Nine uh, want them. Happened. I don't know want the Wanderers happened. six to two. Um, this was the York Nine is actually getting is actually being is actually showing 
that they can do well in this league. Like they, yeah, like yeah. looking at the spring season, they seem to be one like at the bottom of the table, but they are really doing well in this now. in the spring season. Um, you know, they seem to be firing on all cylinders. And they're doing really well. So that was the first hat trick of the CPL. Um, one of the York Nine players got that. And yep. the highest scoring game in the CPL uh, so far with, against... with six goals. And it was against the, uh, the Wanderers. Yeah. Now also in that game, that was a game that uh, Jan Michael Williams bumped his head. And towards the end of that first half, he was actually subbed off at, at, the, at the half. Um, but... You know, it was kind of questionable if he was if he was fit to 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 go back. Just looking at how that last bit played off, and the decision to change the keeper at halftime, which uh, which doesn't happen all that often. Uh, so that was uh, disappointing. And then on the thirty first, out in Edmonton, too. beat them two nothing. Um, and really, I mean, at FC Edmonton... Haven't um, been doing the greatest. Like, well, they, sometimes they win, sometimes they but lose. But they were the better team um, on, on that day, day as well. Okay? So, York 9 is actually in uh, third place. Uh, yeah, Edmonton is in fourth. Pacific, Pacific is in fifth. fifth. HF and the Wanderers in and Valor are are uh, tied at the uh, at the bottom of the table. Yes, now. but 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 HFX <laughs> is in six, Valor's in seventh. Okay. Mind. So the form against Valor is Valor won the first game. Halifax has won all the other games against, against Valor. Yeah. Okay. Two things to note with this game coming up is Michael Petrasso, the Canadian international um, uh, right back midfielder. He's really a pivot for Valor, um, probably their their kind of marquee player, and he's back in the in the lineup. He's been back for uh, for a couple games now. Second thing is uh, Valor actually in mid July has signed uh, Michelle Pellucci, uh, who from is Italy. a veteran forward from Italy. So he's thirty three, mm -hmm. um, you know, similar age to uh, per, uh, Perea, yeah. and he has played in Syria A, uh, so the top top flight league in uh, in in Italy, and probably like one of the best leagues in the world, not to mention. <laughs> so he's going to be playing, um, and we haven't seen him play. I haven't seen him play uh, at all. So this will be exciting to see him play, and it'll be important for Halifax to uh, to to shut them down. A couple things to note about Halifax is, since the first game against the Fury, where is Zoom Langwa? We haven't seen him on the bench. We haven't seen him uh, uh, play. You know, apparently there might have been you know a little bit of something that went on in the in the locker room. I don't know, but uh, but that's kind of what's going on in the, at, at the left back position. Since then, De Carolis, a very different type of player, has really stepped up. And in his first game, he was like the man of the match. Um, he made a, a great run into the box. De Carolis has a, a tendency to, to kind of cut inside a bit um, rather than just kind of make that overlapping outside run, uh, which is, you know, brings a little bit more dynamicism, uh, dynamic uh, elements to the uh, to the attack, which is one of the things that, that I think, you know, where the Ottawa Fury got them because the Ottawa Fury, they just had a lot of interchange in, in positions and they had players moving around uh, uh, significantly. Speaking of which, you know, I think that, you know, looking at the Wanderers lineup, I don't think the spring season has really gone to, to plan and... You know, especially there's with a all lot of different, especially with all those injuries, the spring season didn't go to plan. And even, and just a cool fact about DeCarlos, we actually met his parents. Yeah, they were nice people. Yeah. yeah, so we got to chat for them with them for a bit. Yeah, and we were talking with them in the stadium, and then they said we had to leave because we talked too much. <laughs> so, but uh, so so here's the thing with 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 Halifax. You know, just kind of looking at the roster. You know, they've got. Of, 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 I'm just not sure they've really been able to settle on 
the right formation. You know, one of the interesting things that they did in that second Ottawa Fury game and in the game right after that is they almost played kind of without a midfield. They played with like a lot of defenders um, and then a lot of attackers. So, you know, they had uh, Secunda, who's uh, traditionally like like a defender playing in the midfield and, and up higher. And they started playing both Perea and Skublak at the same time. And I don't think that was ever the intention to play both of those guys at the same time at the beginning, because while they're both strikers, they're very different types of, of players. Perea is not a guy who's going to chase down balls. Um, you know, he's really good with his feet. He plays really good with his back to goal. Uh, what I like about Skublak is he's just tenacious. You know, he's going to make those runs and he just seems to have a really, really strong engine. He just runs and goes and goes and goes. And I really like that. Um, you know, and, and he scored that brilliant goal in, in the, uh, the the Ottawa Fury game where he where he took the touch over to, to his left and then uh, finished yeah. with his over and the defender. Something about the midfield. I wish they had me mid- midfield because it's my position, but I also feel like the midfield is like a key part in soccer. So I don't. I feel like you can't just like ex- not have like a, a good midfield. Like you have to have a very solid midfield, and you have to have people in the midfield. But something I would like to see in the midfield that may that might make us score some more goals is have Ida and Gutierrez play at the same time. Like because the, they've been subbing off for each other. Like they le- like maybe Ida would leave at the seventieth minute and Gutierrez would come on. But I want to see them both play at the same time. With like a striker, maybe like Pereira or somebody, or like Scoo Black. Right. And then I think that if they had that much of an attack, and maybe a they may be a bit like maybe they'd be a bit vulnerable defensively. But I think they could score a lot of goals, and they're and they would like relatively move up in the standings if they had Gutierrez and Ada play together. Because they're yeah. both attacking midfielders. That's why Stephen Hart does not play them together because they have the same position and he's worried if they have too much attack, they'll be too vulnerable but too run- vulnerable at the defense. But you still like to see that. Yeah. Right. And and so this is kind of the, the lineup problem right now. You know, there's there's kind of some pieces juggling around because if you want to play that, if you want to play and, and arguably, Ida has has played a lot of the spring season carrying a knock. Um, I'm sure Stephen Hart wasn't thrilled that uh, Gutierrez got got injured early and was injured for the bulk of the of the spring season. Yeah, and, and at first you thought that Ida was going to be injured because he had been having a bit of trouble with his hamstring, but it ended up being the other way around with Gutierrez. And then you were worried. And then I bet some people were worried about. Ida playing too much and then hurting his hamstring. So right. Well, it, I think I think it's fair to say he was playing with 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 a knock during uh, during you know a, a lot of that spring season as well. But here's the thing: so you can't play Ida Gutierrez and then have those two strikers Skublak Perea and then have your wingers Karuma and Garcia. Right. So if you have all those players on the field, you just like there, there, there's, there's no one else. And you're going to be very vulnerable at the back. So it's, it's kind of this, this balance. And I think that you know Halifax has all the pieces to put it together. It's like you know finding those, you know maybe maybe two or three core lineups to take on different different teams that they can that they can rely on. And it seems like they're still kind of working around seeing who's who's the best. Where what's you know what, not, what what way they're they're, they're gonna line up? When I up. said like Gutierrez and um, eat it together, I also meant for the wingers to be a bit more defensive, like because Alex De Careless sometimes plays there, right? Where? Like at a wing? Or no, he, he plays left back. Well, he did when he was younger. Mm-hmm. Right. So Stephen Hart could take that into account and he could maybe make the wingers a bit more defensive and then have Eden and Gutierrez play together. But it is a bit risky, like just to have Eden yeah. and Gutierrez play together. Yeah, De Carolis, yeah, he's he's very comfortable on the ball. Um, you know, he was he was able to get up. I mean he's he doesn't seem like quite as a flashy player as Langlois, but 
he does get up and he does, you know, get some good service into the box and, uh, and, and, and make some good runs. Um, so, you know, playing left back is always, I mean, you got to, there's a lot of running involved, uh, particularly in the midfield and, and the wide midfield positions, yeah. but yeah, it should be interesting. Um, I don't know how they're going to line up against Valor today, but this, I think Stephen Hart is, is, is going to be telling the squad that this is a must win game for them. Um, you guys really need to, to win this game and yeah, I'm you sure. Know, I'm sure. kind of break this streak because you know they're they, they need to they need to they need to come away with a win, particularly at home, and you know get a goal, get a couple of goals, you know get the crowd excited, and uh, and and move yeah. on from there and start and start climbing up the uh, the table. Mm-hmm. So I'm excited. Um, this guy's going to be a ball boy at the match today. Yeah. So look so for look him if you're watching me. on uh, if you're watching on one soccer. Yeah. Or you're see, in the stands. Or, or you're, you're in the stands. stands watch you know, for me. See if you can see this guy. Um, you know, give him some props from the uh, from the stands. We're gonna be cheering for the Wanderers today. Um, Wanderers, woo! And uh, yeah, it'd be interesting to see how everything lines up. Um, you know, I, I really like you know how the potential this 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 team has, the Halifax Wanderers. I'm looking forward to how they're gonna they're gonna you know, set up this game and, and how it's going to play out. Yeah. Same with me. All right, guys. So that's it for today. If you're going to uh, be at the game, leave a comment below and uh, yeah. let us know. And uh, we will see you at the Wanderers and game. Comment who at is, the Wanderers yeah. grounds. There you go. Yeah. And comment who is your favorite player. All right. See you guys. Bye.